All right, guys, so here's the task I have to do. I need to get these three cards back to work. I've been using them for testing recently, but it's time for them to go back to the mines and get back to work. So I think what I'm gonna do is, you may recall, we built out this bare bone system here, and we actually threw the 1660 Super and 1070 in here just to get them up and running, but we've since used them for testing on other videos. So I'm gonna get these put back in here. We've got two 1070s and a 1660 Super. And I imagine that the 1660 Super is gonna make its way back into the studio for more testing, more hash rate analysis, that kind of stuff. But I am thinking, guys, I have two other 1070s, one in a gaming rig and one in a rig out here. Let me know what you think. I am thinking about making a, a mini rig of those four 1070s only. And I thought it might be fun to see if I could ROI that rig all over again. My 1070s, they're long since paid for. All in one rig together, that'd be a, a really good rig to mine Ravencoin on. So maybe we go after that, but I could track weekly earnings and that sort of thing. So let me know what you think, guys, if that's something you'd like to see. Okay, let me get started. I need to get these things put in and I'll be right back. All right, so the first one is in. We've got power, we've got the riser connected. And I think I'm gonna space these just because I've got the luxury of some space at the moment. So I'll space these out, put the 1070 here, put the super here, knowing that that's probably gonna get pulled, go back to the studio. And then if I add the other 1070s, I can just do it in between or on the outside or something like that. And for the time being, we could use this bare bones rig, maybe as that ROI rig. And uh, yeah, maybe that's what I'll do. Okay, let me get the next one put in. All right, the second one's in now. Let me get the last one. And let's see, yeah, right here. Okay, the last card is in. And I was worried that this cable wasn't going to reach all the way from the ATX power supply all the way over. And I'm not using any splitters or anything like that, but it did. I had a little difficulty with the shroud that's on this super. It makes it look good, but it's a little difficult to get it plugged in. And we are using Hive OS here. And this is our Skywalker image, I believe. This plugged in. Yeah, and I think since we're here, we'll go ahead and just test locally as well. Let's see if my HDMI will reach. I'm gonna have to get a longer HDMI cable. Okay. Yeah, I've already got a longer DVI cable here that'll reach over to this rack. Let's turn it on and make sure everything's booting okay. Okay, oh, man, that air feels good. <laughs> hey, just a quick tip, by the way, if you're working in a hot shed, and you start to sweat a little bit, careful when you lean over your rig to do maintenance. You don't wanna drip anything in there. But man, oh, that feels good. So, by the way, these AAA wave fans, they blow out just about 100 CFM, and you can feel it, definitely, versus like some of my other fans where you know, it's probably getting about 35 to 40 CFM on these. I need to replace those with my AAA wave fans. And no, this isn't sponsored or anything like that. That's legit. And I think what I'm gonna do before I build all of this out is I'm gonna add another row here in the back so that we're pulling air from this back vent here, pushing them onto the cards and then out the front. Man, that feels good. Okay, let's check out the monitor. Okay, sweet, we're booting up. Oh, okay, there we go. Let me get control here. All right, check that out. Our 1070 is up, 1660 Super's up, and 1070 is up. So let me, uh, let's take a look at the miner real quick. Okay, sweet, share found already. 27 mega hash, 27, 27. Okay, I need to do some optimizing here on these overclocks and We'll be done with this task. Okay, so let's take a look at what's going on in Hive. And so our Skywalker rig is up. 
and you can see we've got some bad shares going on here and because we have the monitor plugged in this board has auto detection on that HDMI so once I unplug this we should see this go away right here but let me get uh, my overclock set right here okay so our 1660 super you can see it's at 30.8 mega hash which is pretty good let's check that overclock power limit 80 1800 zero yep good now this is getting bad shares the 1070 right here because it's picked up the overclocks from the 1660 super so let's just change that real quick okay we are back up and you can see both 1070s and the super are up at above 31 mega hash here so looking good I may be able to fine-tune these 1070s a little bit more to get the power down but honestly they don't shine on Ethereum like they do on some other coins so maybe like I said I'll put this over on a Raven coin rig or something like that for the uh, foreseeable future and here we are in the miner you can see everything's working great and now I just need to unplug this HDMI cable and make sure it looks right here in Hive and we'll be all set on this rig. All right, so while we're waiting on this rig to reboot here, I thought I'd just show you guys what's going on with the fan these days. So I still am running on just the one exhaust. We've talked about that before. We're trying to get through the end of summer here and then maybe that'll give us another couple seasons before we have to put in another exhaust fan here. But as we're you know climbing, and GPU count, I think we're gonna be good going into the winter. But uh, on this fan, so if you notice here, it says 84 on both these readings. What I've done to save energy and to just save on sort of the life of the fan itself is I set this to automatically power off when it gets down to 84 degrees and I've told it not to power back on until it goes up about eight degrees. So that's great because again, saving on the life of the fan here, sort of decreasing noise outside and for the neighbors and saving on the power bill. But when you're working in here <laughs> with the GPUs running, it starts to get a little bit warm on these days where that fan's powering off and then eventually a few minutes later powering back on. All right, so we're back in and check it out. It is gone. We've unplugged the HDMI cable and now it's gone from Hive. So basically as the machine rebooted, the BIOS auto detected whether something was plugged in or not. And when it saw that it wasn't, it went ahead and disabled that onboard graphics. So now we don't have any, any bugs. You know, it's kind of hard to keep track with all the Linux based operating systems as to how that affects their fan control and that sort of thing. But there's been warnings that have been put out that just kind of says it's not best practice to do that. So that is one of the nice things about this board is having it auto power that onboard graphics so that you don't have to really worry about going into the BIOS and doing it yourself. We've got this thing done. We're gonna let it run on its merry way here and mine. Let's go work on some other stuff, guys. All right, so we are back in the shed. I have my new 5700 mining rig that I just am loving more and more that I've got it. We're going to put it on there and then we'll have our 5700 rig sitting somewhere right in here. I will be back in just a moment and hopefully you'll see that sitting on top of there. I had a really tough time guys. This was harder than I thought it was going to be. It's in guys. There we go. Everything's connected. We are fired up. Okay, here's the situation I'm dealing with and this is a little behind the scenes look at the new studio that's been set up. We've got our camera gear over here, a little bit of lighting our backdrop, and then this is my work table right here. So when I'm working on a project and I take stuff over to the camera or if I'm unboxing stuff, it kind of starts out here on this table. And some of the overclocking videos you saw when we were doing testing, we were doing that in this rig right over here that we use for gaming and some stuff like that. And we've got another workstation that we're setting up right here. So some really nice fun changes here in the studio. But for the mining farm out in the cave, I'm thinking of moving this studio rig out there. And here's why, one, you can see that it's taking up room on the table. But two, when we tested out that Zotac board, we put it in this small frame here, this pan mining rig frame. And that actually was really super easy to move around on the table here and just kind of get shots of it. So I'm thinking that as we get new GPUs in and we want to test them, I'm just going to do it on this because this is so small and handy. And this 
I can already stack on the two 12 GPU AAA wave frames I have out there. Also, not to mention it's got the AAA wave fans on here, which just have amazing CFM. They're like 100 CFM, and definitely any rigs in the shed need that. So I'm thinking of going ahead and putting this as a bare bone system out there for potentially new NVIDIA cards. I'm gonna go ahead and move it out there. I'm gonna go ahead and stack it. So let me get on that. Next thing you see, I'm gonna carry this out to the shed and we'll get to, uh, get to installing that. Okay, we are back out in the shed. We've got our studio rig here and it is ready. It's ready to be mounted up on the top of this AAA wave tower that we've got going here. <laughs> And I love that the 6 GPU version can stack on top of the 12 GPU version. And you know, I'm looking back on this, if I were to buy these outright and try to sort of spec up the best way to do this, I probably would go ahead and buy the 12 GPU versions, just they're not that much more. And you can see it leaves space for you to add cards. And until you do, you've just got a little bit of extra space for cooling on the GPUs as well which is kind of nice. And since this is gonna be the topmost rig frame, what I did is I took these little rubber feet that are designed to go on the bottom here and I just flipped them and I put them on the top because I'm always scraping my arms on these little metal rods right here. So I'll probably glue them on and, uh, and leave those on since that'll be the topmost rig on this tower. So I've got my hardware here to get everything mounted up and unfortunately just to be safe i'm gonna have to shut down these rigs and pull power because i don't want to drop any screws or anything like that from up top down into one of the motherboards or something like that so i got to be extra careful uh, you know if there was any way hindsight being 2020 if there was any way i could have built the entire frame all at once that would have been ideal but you know it is what it is no big deal i just need to power everything down and we'll get this put on top and we're gonna have plenty of room right here for additional GPUs to go in. It's kind of cool, kind of exciting to see all this filled out over here. Okay, all right, let me get back to this. Let me get this put on and I'll be right back, guys. So here it is, here it is. This is what it looks like. I'm not quite done yet, but it's just, it's really impressive with these things all stacked all the way up here. So I can get 12, 24, 30, 30 GPUs all in this tower right here. And I could just, you know, slide that right back into place. It wasn't that difficult to slide out, even with everything on it. What has been the most difficult, and the reason I actually started recording, I wanted to show you. Man, getting these screws right here that's matching the bottom frame to the top frame, getting those to match up are, is so difficult. It is so difficult, and here's why. Because when you build these, when you build one, it's fine. You can have some slight variations in the way that one rod bends this way or that way. But then when you start connecting them all together, if they're not absolutely precise and square, then this top one, these rods, and the ones in the back, and over there and over there, are gonna be a little bit off from the ones below it. So as I'm adding these, I'm having to go one screw at a time, and then, I don't know if you can see this, I actually, my finger's bleeding. It, there was some serious torque going on and I got pinched between this metal. And uh, yeah, the finger started bleeding a little bit. And so what I had to do was actually go and loosen up a little bit of the rest of the frame here from the top and the bottom. Just loosen it up a little bit so that the whole thing could, could bend a little bit and adjust as needed just so I can get the screws even started to attach the two frames. So I guess my tip would be if you're gonna stack these, I, I, I love the end product, I love what it's gonna be, but just a tip while you're doing it is definitely go ahead and loosen these up on you know any area that you can so that you can try to fit these together and then tighten it all back down. And I think I'll be ready to push this back into place. So let me get that done and I'll be back in just a minute, guys. All right, it is all done, guys. Let me know what you think. I think it looks great. <laughs> it was pretty difficult to push back into place here. It's, uh, yeah, kind of wishing it was on wheels or maybe I had some of those sliders that you put under furniture or something like that. I don't know, I may work on that, but it was a little difficult to get back into place, but once I did, I think it looks great. It looks awesome stacked here. And I really, man, I can't wait to get this thing just populated with a bunch of GPUs. 
And we've got our new 5700 Asus uh, Rod Strix rig right here that's running solid. And now we've got this one ready to go. Can do testing on it, I can use it to build out whatever whatever I need, guys. Lots of lots of room here. And that'll hold, you know, again, 12, 24, 30. 30 for that tower right there. And my goal for the shed is to get 100 GPUs. I wanna get up to 100. And right now we're at about 50. We're at about 50 in here. All right, just a quick aside here, folks. I just wanted to give a shout out, a thank you to everybody that watches and everybody that participates and leaves a comment and visits Discord and everybody that helps other viewers out, other viewers that have questions, they're troubleshooting, they're pulling their hair out. I just wanted to say thank you. And I wanted to point out here, we, at the time of shooting this video, we are about five subscribers short of passing through 4,000. And as you know, we've been doing a 2,000 slash 3,000 subscriber giveaway. We're halfway through that. So we're actually just getting to the 3,000 subscriber giveaway. We've got a power supply and a couple of other kind of neat items that we're going to be giving away in some upcoming episodes. We're going to pause in this one as I regroup because now we're going to have to come up with a new game plan for 4,000 subscribers as well. We're going to tack that on and do a continued celebration and give everyone lots of chances to win stuff. And I just wanted to say thank you real quick here at the end before we said goodbye at this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it. And again, just thank you for participating in the community and helping out anybody that needs help. I won't go on too long, guys. Come back in the next video. Keep watching, and we'll see you soon. Code monkey not say it. Out loud, code monkey not crazy. Just proud, code monkey like Fritos. Code monkey like Tab and Mountain Dew. Code monkey, very simple man. With big, warm, fuzzy, secret heart. Code monkey like you.